So let's issue an FAQ that changes the core rules of 40k, but do it in a really quiet and hard to find way so not that many people will know that you messed up. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about a small but important change to the 40k core rules, that again Games Workshop seems to have tried to publish a bit on the down low, inside a massive document of changes with no clear indication as to what has been altered. Basically this represents them flip-flopping on a fairly important engagement range change that they made a few weeks back, and the headline news is that things are going back to the way that they were before, I'm sure a lot of people probably won't have even noticed. So this FAQ change is basically Games Workshop undoing their previous fix, and it's been announced on their social media, on their Facebook page, though in general with these FAQ fixes they don't tend to publish them on Warhammer Community unless they're making really quite a lot of big alterations to the game. Again, the document is an absolutely huge document with no highlighted changes, it's basically the entire Warhammer 40k core rules FAQ, and generally when they do make changes they tend to highlight changed rules in blue and new rules in pink, but if they happen to delete any previous FAQs then that's just basically unlisted, there's no strike through or anything, and no change log of the things that have been altered, even if they are changing a fairly core way about how the fight phase works. I don't know if they just literally do this to save face, but people are going to sift through and see what's changed anyway, so it's not like people aren't going to find out. They could have put in a simple sentence to say that this rule has changed the way that the fight phase works, back to the way that it was before the previous FAQ, as it was working in ways that we didn't intend when we made the alteration. I don't think anyone would be too mad with that, I'm sure we'll get a few people scoffing at Games Workshop flip-flopping, but honestly I think that this is a sensible change that they've made, and it was the initial fix that was their mistake. I know they are going to get a fair amount of criticism for them changing a rule in the combat phase and then changing it back to the way it was to start with, but honestly I think that this change back is better than them just leaving it and actually owning up to their mistake and fixing it. It was their initial fix that was the mistake, in my opinion. So we did cover this at the time on the channel. Basically the change that Games Workshop made a month or so back was to change the engagement range rules when you're fighting through obscuring terrain. Normally in 40k engagement range is 1 inches and also 5 inches vertically. If you get to there then you're in combat and you're locked up fighting, and you can't normally go within 1 inches of enemy models unless you're making a charge. For the most part I think this rule really does work pretty well. Nice and simple and easy to understand, and doesn't seem too restrictive for the units doing the charging. Games Workshop did decide to tweak this though in terrain, to attempt to fix a tournament exploit that some people were using, where you'd basically be able to set up models just behind ruins and prevent charges. I don't think that it's an exploit that's particularly common in more casual games of 40k, though it is a fairly common play in tournaments. The idea is that you set your models up just a little bit further than one inch behind the ruin walls, and then you basically become very hard to charge for your opponents. It means that you can't get within engagement range if you're just outside the ruin walls, and then once you've taken the thickness of the walls into account, there's usually not going to be enough room for your base to fit in between the wall and the models that are inside the ruin. So basically, if you want to charge the unit in the ruin, it means that you need to go round to the end of the squad to be able to charge them, and it means that the charge range might be a bit longer, potentially impossible out of deep strike in some situations. It does feel like a bit of a weird abstraction of the rules that doesn't really make too much sense in-game, it just feels a bit arbitrary that the size of the model's base can often mean that you have to go around to the end of the unit, and a unit's far harder to charge just because they happen to have set up exactly one inches away, and no closer and no further. I don't really blame them for trying to fix it, though I'd argue it isn't really the biggest deal in 40k, in some ways it can almost make a bit of law sense, seeing as you might be a bit harder to charge if you're manning terrain in a correct and prepared way. The problem was that the fix that they implemented basically made far more problems than the rules that it fixed, I did talk about this in the previous video, basically they made engagement range become 2 inches if the target was within 2 inches of obscuring cover, and if the shortest possible distance between the two units did overlap that terrain piece. It did largely fix this exploit, as it means that you can't just set up 1 inches away, as that would mean that the opponent could just set up their models out of the ruin and be in combat, and if they backed off 2 inches, usually that's going to give you enough space to get a base in, so they'd be able to charge you that way anyway. Unfortunately though, it just made a lot of weirdness happen in turn. It meant that for deep strike charges, usually arriving 9 inches away, it drops the 9 inch charge down to 8 inch, and that's so much easier to do. Really weird that the models that are in cover will be so much easier to charge compared with the ones out of it. It just doesn't really seem like a rule that they'd intend to make deep strike charges that much easier almost across the board and across the game. It also led to weird move block shenanigans, 
If the models were out of cover, then they'd only block a distance that's just over 1 inches away from each model. If they were in cover, then that goes out to zoning out a massive 2 inches. That denies a lot more movement to your opponent, and it could be a big deal if it blocks, say, a big scary monster from moving between ruins because of that big increase in engagement range for the unit huddle within. Finally, it also allowed a gamey charge rules exploit, where you could basically abuse this rule to have a unit charge a unit, get to fight them at full profile in combat, and then use their consolidation move to make it so they weren't in combat anymore and couldn't be hit back whatsoever. Say for example, this space marine captain charges these chaos terminators, he moves to just within 2 inches of them and is within obscuring terrain. That means he can fight them, and then he uses his consolidation move to move just outside of the obscuring terrain, closer to the closest enemy model, but now crucially no longer triggering that 2 inch engagement range rule. That means he's now out of combat, and rules as written the Chaos Terminators can't hit back. Very abstract and unintended, perhaps out of anything this was perhaps the single most important thing to fix. Finally, as well as creating all those problems, in a fair few circumstances it didn't even necessarily fix what they were going for to start with. It was helpful in the vast majority of circumstances, as it would usually mean that anything from something like a 25 to 40mm base should be able to charge a unit in cover regardless of the ruin walls, but it's still very possible to deny charges to things with bigger bases just by using the exact same thing. Say really big infantry models with massive bases like Space Marine Centurions, they could still struggle, particularly if the ruin walls were kind of thick, and while it meant that the opponent had to do a bit more clever positioning if they're fighting loads of vehicles or monsters, it's still a pretty viable tactic against things like Night Armagers for example, they're still equally going to struggle if the opponent just sets up just more than 2 inches back, as it still means they're going to have to go around the whole terrain piece. I did speculate as to how they could choose to fix these different rules if they wanted to, but the annoying thing would be that they would have actually had to go in and probably do an individualised fix for each one of these weird interactions, and I can't really blame them just for the sake of simplicity for scrapping that change altogether and just putting things back to the way that they were before. It still means that gamey 1 inch scenario is now a thing again in tournaments. It often will make sense to set up units that way, to deny charges where possible. But again, while feeling a little bit gamey, I'm not sure it was the biggest issue in the world. And again, I guess you could think of it as basically the models manning cover to try and repel charges as best as possible. Let me know what you think though. I'm going to imagine that there's going to be a fair few people not particularly impressed on Games Workshop flip-flopping on rules, though I would say in this case I think that the actual mistake that they made was the first fix they implemented, and it's probably a good thing that they've put things back to the way that they were. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to keep up with 40k updates, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I will keep the 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new things just about every day. Finally, if you've been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that down in the video description if you're interested. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.